Hello, my name is Jean Pierce. I'm with Oregon UU Voices for Justice. Today, we're going to talk about how to use OLIS, the Oregon Legislative Information System. But first, let's find out how to get action alerts from Oregon UU Voices to learn about bills that are being addressed in OLIS. We'll click on the website, and up here at the top, it says participate. Sign up for our action of the week. Okay, fill in the form and be sure that you submit it. Now, once you've gotten an action of the week alert from Voices, you'll want to find out more about it, find out how to testify and so on by going to the Oregon Legislative Information System. You can type OLIS into your search engine and then click on Oregon Legislative Information System. Not all that long ago, you got a, a action of the week alert uh, from Voices regarding a public bank task force. Let's look up that bill to see how that went. First, we go to session. That was in the 2023 regular session. And then we can look up the bill for that session. We can look it up by bill number, by text, or by sponsor. In this case, it was about public banking. And we find that there were two bills. One established the Bank of the State of Oregon. Another one establishes a state public bank task force. That's the one that we're looking for. <clears throat> up here at the top, we see it was enrolled. That means it was passed by both chambers of the legislature. Let's find out more about it. Down here, we see a summary. Establishes a state public bank task force. Well, that doesn't tell us much. So we open it up and find directs the task force to study and make recommendations regarding establishment of a state public bank. Requires the task force to submit a report to the Committee of Legislative Assembly by January 31st. Looks like that was changed by amendment to September 1st declares an emergency, effective on passage. Let's find out more about what this emergency is. We go up here to text. We see we there are different texts. One was, the first one is how it was introduced, and then it was amended. Engrossed means that the amendment was added to the text. It was amended again. Once again, the engrossed version includes the amendment. And finally, here's the enrolled version. Scrolling down to the bottom, we see this 2023 act being necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, and safety. An emergency is declared to exist and this 2023 act takes effect on its passage. Let's find out more about what happened. When we scroll down to measure history, we see that the bill was first read into the record in the House on January 9th. Then it was referred to the Emergency Management General Government and Veterans Committee, and subsequently to the Ways and Means Committee. The Emergency Management Committee held a public hearing on February 16th. That's when people were able to give their own testimony. And then they voted on it during this work session on March 9th. They passed it and it went on to the Ways and Means Committee to determine the fiscal impact. They too held a public hearing and they voted on it and they too passed it uh, with a recommendation. So it held a second reading on June 13th, on June 14th, the third reading in the House, this is when the final vote was taken for the House, and it passed with 31 ayes and 26 nays. It lists the people who voted against it. Then it went on to the Senate, had a similar history there. And finally, on August 4th, it went, uh-oh, the governor vetoed the bill. We know that more work is being done on this to address the governor's concerns, so it's going to come up again. Let's find out what happened in the committee sessions. We'll search. The, we know the first uh, committee was the uh, emergency 
committee. So in the House, we look under emergency management, general government, and veterans. We can find out who was on that committee. And we see that they had a whole bunch of meetings. If there's an arrow after the meeting, that means it was recorded. And we can spend the next hour and a half listening to what happened during that meeting. Now, supposing we want to be able to uh, testify during a meeting, we want to know when they're going to be accepting testimony, we want to track the bill, we come up here to more and then legislative data available to the public. Click on that, click on legislative open data, and it comes to a page where we have a whole bunch of wonderful information for advocates. Let's first go to subscribe to email alerts. This is going to give us information about when committees are meeting and when they will be accepting testimony. We can sign up for information in general about the legislature. We can sign up for information from about what's happening in all of the different committees. And we can sign up for member newsletters for each of the senators and representatives. Now, once we uh, find out uh, when when a bill is going to be heard in a committee and they're accepting testimony, let's find out how to testify. We click on that and see that we need to register in order to testify. Now, there are three ways to present oral testimony. We can go to Salem and present it in person. We can stay at home and present a recorded version, or we can phone it in. It gives us a lot of information about if we're going to go to Salem, make sure you arrive there early. Uh, if you're going to give uh, oral recorded testimony, make sure that your video and uh, microphone are off. You can present testimony with sign language or uh, uh, Spanish language uh, interpretation. So it, it has a lot of helpful information. Supposing we want to find out uh, more about the committee so that we can give our oral testimony. We need to know the name of the committee, uh, the, the committee chair. In this case, it's Representative Deja Graber. Okay, because when we present oral testimony, we have to begin by recognizing the chair of the committee. So we'll say, Chair Graber and members of the committee, for the record, my name is Jean Pierce and I live in Beaverton. Note, I'm not mentioning that I'm speaking on behalf of Oregon UU Voices or any other group. I have to have special permission in order to do that. At the end, I'm going to thank the committee and present a strong wrap up. Now, I have to make sure that I stay within the time limit. <clears throat> Otherwise, I'm going to be cut off. If I have a question about the time limit, I'll come down here to committee assistant and call that person to ask any questions that I have about uh, how to present testimony. Now, how to testify told me how to present oral testimony. Suppose I want to present written testimony. I'll come to how to submit testimony and I'll get a number of uh, pieces of information regarding how to submit it and where to submit it. Uh, and uh, so this is also very, very useful to know. Supposing after I write it and submit it to the uh, committee, I also want to submit it to my legislator. I can click over here on find your legislator and then I can submit a copy to them. I hope this gives you a, an idea of how to use the system in order to respond to Oregon UU Voices uh, 
action alerts. Uh, if you have any questions, please send them to OregonUUVoices at yahoo.com.